So maybe you finally decided to switch to Final Cut Pro from Premiere Pro. What was it for you? I mean, for me, it was the constant crashes and weird glitches and just a whole bunch of random stuff that really put me off using Premiere Pro. And about three years ago, I decided to commit to Final Cut Pro. And trust me, it's been one of the best decisions I've ever made in my content creation career. So if you're about to do the same, I congratulate you. But the idea of this video is just to help you through getting the basics of Final Cut Pro, especially in those areas that feel most confusing if you're a native Premiere Pro user and you're running into some of those small roadblocks. So I've got my coffee ready because this is going to be a long video. Hopefully it's going to be helpful. Let's jump onto the Mac and get into it. All right, so here we are inside Final Cut Pro. And if your display doesn't look quite like this, just hit Command Zero and that will reset Final Cut Pro to the default layout. So it'll look exactly the same as mine. Now, basically I'm gonna set up a new project and then kind of go through my process of how I would normally edit a video in order to show you the differences between how you might do the same thing in Premiere Pro. So the first thing to think about is projects or libraries. Now in Premiere Pro, your projects are called projects, right? So that's where all of your sequences and footage and audio and everything is organized. In Final Cut Pro, they're just called libraries. So I'm just gonna go file new library and then I'm just going to call it final and then hit save. And now we have a library open in Final Cut Pro. And again, just think about this as like a project that you would have in Premiere Pro. Now in Premiere Pro, you're used to having bins, right? So bins would be your different folders for different types of media or even different projects within your project. In Final Cut Pro, we've got what's called events. So this is an event. You can see it's an event with a little star. I might just name this YouTube video. And the way I personally use events is kind of like a main folder for a particular video within a single project. So for example, I might do a light review and I might want to do a full long form review in horizontal format. So I might create an event called YouTube video, but then say I wanted to use the same files to create some shorts for YouTube or some reels for Instagram. I might create another event and just name that Instagram reels or something like that. And then I'll organize all the relevant files within that folder. Now, when it comes to actual bins where you might store your footage or your audio all separately in Final Cut Pro, you've basically got keyword collections. So I'm just gonna right click on my event and then hit new keyword collection. And then I can just name this footage. I'm gonna create a new one called audio. And then these are essentially our two bins like we would have in Premiere Pro. This is where we can organize all of our relevant media within these specific folders. Next, very similar to how in Premiere Pro, you can just drag and drop footage straight into your bins. You can also do that in Final Cut Pro. You can also use the import menu within Premiere Pro and the same in Final Cut Pro, we can go up to file and then import media. And this will bring up a specific import window. So we can go through all of our folders up here on the left and navigate through our file system right here. And then once we've got the folder that we want, we can just click through and see all the different footage that we've got and preview as well. So it's pretty similar to Premiere Pro with all of this type of stuff. You can select multiple files and then you can also copy the files into your library and leave them in place, which is what I prefer to do. And then there's a whole bunch of other settings that you can use to create proxy media and analyze the footage, auto-correct it, stuff like that. To me, that's all getting a bit complicated. So I generally don't use the import menu. Generally, I'll just go to my finder, find the footage that I want. So all this, for example, and then just drag and drop that into my footage keyword collection. Now you didn't see anything happen, but if we click on footage, you'll see all of that footage that we just imported. And the cool thing is you can just mouse over and preview it right here in your main preview window, which is to me, arguably a benefit over Premiere Pro. With Prem, you've got the preview window for your media, and then you've got the preview window for your time. Timeline. In Final Cut, it's just the same window, which to me just simplifies the whole layout. Now, if we want to create a timeline within Final Cut Pro, which we would call a sequence in Premiere Pro, we just go down here to new project. So this is where it gets a little bit confusing for Prem users. Some of the terminology is mixed and matched. So in Final Cut Pro, a project is a sequence. Trust me, you'll get your head around it pretty quickly. And to me, it actually makes a lot more sense. So if we go new project, we can just name our project. Let's go YouTube video long form. And then from there, we can select our format, resolution, frame rate. I usually just leave this at default as long as it's set to 4K and hit OK. And now we have a timeline available. As you can see, our preview is cleared because we're looking at our timeline right now and there's nothing in it. And if you're looking for where this project is saved, it's just in your main event folder. So if we go to YouTube video, scroll up to the top, you can see our project is right here. So from here, we can just start importing footage directly into our timeline. So if I just click on one, it'll have this yellow box around it. That just means it's selected. And we can just click and drag straight into our timeline. And there it is, it's part of our timeline. Do the same for another clip. Another easy way to select a specific part of the clip is to use in and out. So let's just say, I want this little part of the video where I take the cover off. Just go to here and then hit I for in, move forward and 
and then O for out. And you can see here it's selected with this yellow box, just a specific portion of the clip. Then I can just drag and drop that into my timeline and it's only got that specific section of my clip. So it's very similar to how Premiere Pro does it as well within the preview window. It's just I and O. Now, if you've been paying attention, you might have noticed something that's quite a bit different to Premiere Pro and that's the timeline. So each time I drag in a new clip, it's actually automatically moving this clip to snap in place with the last clip in the timeline. And this is a feature of the famous or infamous, depending on who you talk to, magnetic timeline. And the reason it's called magnetic is basically because of what you just saw. Any new clips you add to the timeline will magnetically snap to the end of your timeline. If you wanna add a new clip in between a couple of others, you just drag and drop that in between like that, and it will magnetically just snap everything together. Now this is really confusing for first time users who've come from Premiere Pro because you'll be used to a timeline where you can move the clips wherever you want and they just stay where you put them. But to me, over time, this has actually become one of the best features of Final Cut for me because it actually saves me a lot of time having to manually move around clips and snap them into place because Final Cut just does it for me automatically. And it's actually really easy to move clips around. You can just move it, as you can see, up in the timeline and then the timeline automatically adjusts for the new position of that clip. Same thing if we adjust clips, the length of clips. So if we select one, if I want to shorten it, we can just go to the end here and similar to Premiere Pro, we can just drag our clip shorter or longer depending on what we want. That, as you can see, the, the actual timeline is following as well, which again, saves you a lot of time shortening a clip, having to move the entire timeline down. It just feels to me a lot more intuitive and just smoother. Another thing you've probably picked up is that we've got this video scrub tool, which is just automatically previewing the section of the video that we're looking at. Obviously in Premiere Pro, you have to manually drag the timeline indicator to the position that you want to preview. Whereas again, I find just being able to move your mouse around and preview the timeline, it's just a lot more efficient and intuitive. Now, what about if you want to add B-roll over your main timeline? So it's pretty much the same as Premiere Pro. We just click and drag and we just drag it over the top of our existing timeline. And this is where it feels a bit more similar to Premiere Pro. So anything that's above the main storyline will just stay in place where you put it. And you can see this little connector here. That's showing you which clip it's connecting to. So this is going to connect to the first clip right here. So if I move this first clip, the top clip is going to move with it. Again, it feels a little bit confusing for someone who's moving from Prem, but as you start to use it, it'll just become second nature and it will feel really easy to use. Now, when it comes to audio, I'm just going to import some music. I'm just going to drag this into my audio keyword collection. And now we can see a preview of our audio and I'm just going to drag this straight into our timeline. And as you can see, audio will always go below your main storyline. And just like anything above the storyline, you can move this to any position in the timeline that you want. And it's going to connect where this little line is appearing. So now if I move this front clip, the audio is going to move with it. But if I don't like where the audio ends up, I can always just move that straight back to the start. Finally, the same thing goes for deleting clips in your timeline. So let's just say I didn't want this clip anymore. If I just hit delete, it's going to snap the timeline back into position so that it's lined up with the previous clip. And then you also just have to remember that that attachment rule also applies to anything you're deleting. So if I delete this clip, which has this clip attached to it, they're both going to get deleted. But I can delete this top clip independently of the bottom clip. So just hit delete and it's gone. Now let's talk a bit about titles, transitions and effects. And this, to be honest, was one of the main reasons why I decided to commit to moving over to Final Cut Pro because to me, they're just a lot more streamlined and intuitive than they are in Prem. So you might remember in Premiere Pro, if you want to add a transition between clips, you have to go to your effects panel and then you've got just these names of different transitions. So you have to kind of just try them out to see what looks good. Now in Final Cut Pro, there is a dedicated transitions tab, which is right here on the right hand side. So if I click this I can then drag this window out a bit so I can see more of my transitions. And then I've already got a whole bunch of different transitions that are pre-installed. So there's a whole bunch of defaults that come with Final Cut Pro and then you can install your own transitions as well. But the great thing about Final Cut Pro is that you can preview them as well. So if I just mouse over and move through in our preview window, we're going to get a good idea of what this transition is going to look like on our footage. And you can go through and do this for all the different transitions within the transitions viewer. And then say we find a transition that we like, all we have to do is just drag and drop it into place between the two clips that we want the transition to affect. And then if we play it back, we can see that our transition has been applied. And it's really that easy. If you want to adjust this transition, you can zoom in and then same as Premiere Pro, you can just drag it out to make it longer or shorter, depending on what you want for your video. And if you want to adjust the settings just for that particular transition up here in your inspector window, a lot of transitions will have custom settings. This one doesn't have much. Some have more, some have less. Again, quite similar to Premiere Pro. Now, if you're looking for titles in Premiere Pro, 
Pro. To me, again, they're a lot more simple than what you would find in Premiere. If you just want to add a simple basic title, just hit Control T and then just like that, we've got a title ready to go. So it will appear as this purple line above your storyline. So just click on it, go up to our inspector. And then here you can see our text window. And then in here, we can just type in, this is my title. And you can adjust all of the usual settings like font, the size, alignment, all that type of stuff. You've also got glow, drop shadow, outline, the color of your text, all that type of stuff right here in your inspector window. If you want more involved titles, you can go up here to the titles and generators window. So again, this is quite similar to the transitions window, but this is for dedicated titles. And again, in Final Cut Pro, you can preview these really easily. So you can get an idea of what the different titles will look like. I've got a whole bunch of different ones that I've installed over the years on here. For example, these glitch titles, which you can preview. And let's just say I like this one. It's just a matter of dragging and dropping it into our timeline. Play that back it's good to go. So to me, it's just a lot more straightforward than in Premiere Pro. Again, if I want to adjust any of the settings, I can go up to our inspector window. There's a whole bunch of stuff we can adjust in here. And you can also lengthen these titles just by dragging, which makes it super easy. And then finally, if you want to add specific effects to your clips, you can do that here in the effects browser. So again, same deal as all the other different browsers. I've got a whole bunch of different effects that I've installed. And there's a whole bunch that just come by default with Final Cut Pro. And if I just mouse over, I can actually get a preview of the effect on my selected clip. So there's already a whole bunch of different effects that you can find, like I said. So let's just say we wanna use this camcorder effect. You just drag and drop that onto your clip and that will instantly apply the effect. Again, just like everything else, if you wanna adjust details of that effect, just go up to your inspector window and often it will be really customizable to suit your particular needs. And if you've already started playing around with the effects, transitions and all that type of stuff and you want more, I definitely recommend checking out Motion VFX. You can install it as a plugin right within Final Cut. And this gives you a whole bunch of already created overlays, effects, text effects. There's so many different elements, collections, themes that you can all get within Motion VFX. And again, you can just preview it right within this plugin. It's just how we find one that we like. I just hit download. So I'll leave a link for that down in the description if you want to check it out. The same goes for captions. So one of the good things about Premiere Pro is that it has a really great transcription service that can help you generate captions. Final Cut Pro doesn't have a transcription or caption ability natively. But again, you can get plugins, including mCaptions AI, which uses AI to transcribe your audio and create automatic captions, which is also from Motion VFX. It was not a sponsor, by the way, but I've just been using their stuff recently. Now, lastly, let's talk a bit about exporting your videos from Final Cut once they're finished. And to explain that, let's talk a bit about rendering. So in Premiere Pro, typically if you make changes in your timeline, it won't automatically render that section, which might result, as you've probably experienced, laggy playback or or stuttering footage. It makes your computer work a lot harder, which again, can just slow down your overall process. The thing with Final Cut Pro is that it automatically renders your timeline pretty much anytime you're not touching it for a few seconds. So with this title here, if I extend it and make a change to my timeline, you can see these white dots up here have appeared on the timeline. And that means that this section is unrendered. So if I move my mouse off the timeline for a second, you can see up here, where the little tick is. It's now turned into a progress bar and it's now complete. So that just rendered this whole section of the timeline, which results in two benefits. The first is when I play it back, there's gonna be no stuttering because it's already rendered and it's ready to play, which makes playback really smooth. And then the second benefit is that when I actually go to export the video, since it's already pre-rendered a whole bunch of stuff, it'll be able to export my video a lot faster than Premiere Pro can. So in order to export, all we have to do is go up here to our share button. I've already created a bunch of presets. You can just go export file, which is the default. Here you can name it. And then if you go to the settings tab, we can adjust some more specific settings for our export. So I'll typically do video and audio in H.264 for and that will usually default to the standard resolution of my timeline. Just hit next. Let's just say I want to save it here. Just hit save. And just like that, again, we've got this little progress bar that appears up in the top left corner. You can also click on this and that's going to bring up our background tasks window and we can see the progress bar of the transcreating of the video. So as you can see, it's going pretty quickly. This will be exported in no time and it'll be ready to upload. So again, in Premiere Pro overall, you've got more granular control in terms of being able to adjust specific settings or dial things in, but a lot of it really is 
too advanced and kind of unnecessary for a typical content creator like you and me. And that's where I think is the main benefit for Final Cut Pro is that it's just much more streamlined. You're not overwhelmed with options that you don't know which ones to select, which ones to choose. You can just jump in, edit your video very simply, very efficiently with everything laid out in logical positions, which as a result to me always ends up meaning I'm able to produce more content in the same amount of time. So that's why I've moved to Final Cut Pro. Let me know what you think. If you've got more questions, let me know in the comments. I might make a follow up video. And I'm also really curious, what was the reason why you decided to move away from Premiere Pro? In the meantime, if you want more training on Final Cut Pro, then I've got a whole bunch of different videos showing you how to do a whole bunch of different things. So check out this playlist right here and you can go even more in depth into this great piece of software.